Several years ago, I was at uh, someone's house for a small group in New York City, and I noticed that uh, it, because it was a studio apartment, uh, we saw his bed, and under his bed, he had a baseball bat. And I pulled it out, and he explained that uh, because he lives in this part of New York City, he keeps that baseball bat ready just in case somebody breaks in and uh, threatens him physically. Uh, when I was in junior high school, my brother and I collected all this um, ninja weapon uh, stuff, like whatever, ninja stars and throwing knives. And um, I guess we always thought if anyone broke into our home, we could defend ourselves. Now, when I drive, it's, it's not really on purpose, but I have this huge mag light flashlight in my car. And I guess somewhere in the back of the, my mind, I thought, if I ever have to defend my wife and two small children, uh, because I wouldn't want to do it with my physical body, I would use the mag light flashlight. Um, have you ever consciously or in the back of your mind um, stashed away weapons for whatever reason? Uh, I want to discuss this more after the scripture reading. Ezekiel chapter 39 verses 1 through 20 Son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, I will turn you around and drag you along. I will bring you from the far north and send you against the mountains of Israel. Then I will strike your bow from your left hand and make your arrows drop from your right hand. On the mountains of Israel you will fall, you and all your troops and the nations with you. I will give you as food to all kinds of carrion birds and to the wild animals. You will fall in the open field, for I have spoken, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will send fire on Magog and on those who live in safety in the coastlands, and they will know that I am the Lord. I will make known my holy name among my people Israel. I will no longer let my holy name be profaned, and the nations will know that I the Lord am the Holy One in Israel. It is coming. It will surely take place, declares the Sovereign Lord. This is the day I have spoken of. Then those who live in the towns of Israel will go out and use the weapons for fuel and burn them up. The small and large shields, the bows and arrows, the war clubs and spears. For seven years they will use them for fuel. They will not need to gather wood from the fields or cut it from the forests because they will use the weapons for fuel. And they will plunder those who plundered them and loot those who looted them, declares the Sovereign Lord. On that day I will give Gog a burial place in Israel in the valley of those who travel east toward the sea. It will block the way of travelers because Gog and all his hordes will be buried there. So it will be called the Valley of Haman Gog. For seven months the house of Israel will be burying them in order to cleanse the land. All the people of the land will bury them, and the day I am glorified will be a memorable day for them, declares the Sovereign Lord. Men will be regularly employed to cleanse the land. Some will go throughout the land, and in addition to them, others will bury those that remain on the ground. At the end of the seven months, they will begin their search. As they go through the land and one of them sees a human bone, he will set up a marker beside it until the gravediggers have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog. Also, a town called Hamana will be there. And so they will cleanse the land. Son of man, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Call out to every kind of bird and all the wild animals. Assemble and come together from all around to the sacrifice I am preparing for you, the great sacrifice on the mountains of Israel. There you will eat flesh and drink blood. 
You will eat the flesh of mighty men and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, as if they were rams and lambs, goats and bulls, all of them fattened animals from Bashan. At the sacrifice I am preparing for you, you will eat fat till you are glutted, and drink blood till you are drunk. At my table you will eat your fill of horses and riders, mighty men and soldiers of every kind, declares the Sovereign Lord. Today's scripture reading has a prophecy against Gog and Magog, and I just find that very interesting. It sounds like a science fiction movie uh, that the enemies of God's people and God are called Gog and Magog. And I want to read page 102 in the Living Life devotional that helps us to understand this passage. The prophecy of God's judgment against Gog continues. Gog is described as the ruler of Meshech and Tubal, but many believe he is also a symbolic figure who represents a powerful and ruthless enemy of God, the implication being that God will judge and destroy those who would rise up against Israel and his people. God's judgment against Gog and his army is fierce and complete. They will not rise again and through their defeat, the Lord's name will be made known in the midst of his people and among all the nations. God makes it clear that there will be a day of reckoning for all his enemies and those who oppose his people. I want to highlight verses 9 and 10. I'll just read it quickly. I know it was a long passage. Then those who live in the towns of Israel will go out and use the weapons for fuel and burn them up the small and large shields, the bows and arrows, the war clubs and spears. For seven years they will use them for fuel. They will not need to gather wood from the fields or cut it from the forests, because they will use the weapons for fuel and they will plunder those who plundered them and loot those who looted them, declares the Sovereign Lord. This is an interesting passage. It's a pretty radical message uh, the prophecy is saying that God is going to take care of Israel's enemies, Gog and Magog, so much to the point that the people of God will take all their weapons of wars, weapons of war in all their varieties, and use them as fuel for the fire. They will no longer have to go out looking for wood to burn. They'll just burn their weapons. And their stash of weapons will provide fire for seven years. And not only that, um, then God will give them the plunder of their enemies. God will give them the plunder of their enemies, the riches, the things that their enemy was trying to take from them and loot from them. God will give them those riches. Uh, this is such an interesting message Seven years, they're burning all these weapons of war because there will be no need for weapons of war. Not only that, the point is, even beyond those seven years, there will be no need for weapons of war because there will be no war. Uh, you know, I, was, um, I saw somewhere online the uh, castle that the Disney castle in Orlando was based on. Apparently it's some uh, medieval castle in Spain somewhere uh, surrounded by cliffs and you have to take a bridge to get there and all these uh, walls and defenses and um, weapons pointing out. And I thought that's amazing how in medieval times people would protect themselves in castles with walls and sometimes water moats and it, it made me sad if if people had something worth stealing if people had something worth protecting they needed to basically have a small army to protect themselves and yet here it, it, this passage is amazing it's saying that God will take care of their enemies so they will not need weapons of war. One thing is predictable in life is that 
we will always have people against us. I don't care how nice and innocent and non-confrontational you might be, if you live in the real world, if you work in a corporate setting, if you have coworkers of any kind, if you're a part of any community, part of any family, I guarantee you will have enemies. People who will badmouth you, um, people who will sabotage your career and your success, people who will try to bring you down for whatever reason. Maybe they think it's going to help them, maybe it makes them feel better about themselves. For whatever convoluted reason there may be, I guarantee you will have enemies. And what are you going to do about it? Uh, recently, we were going through the weekly Bible study in this booklet, and the opening question was, when somebody hurts you, do you retaliate or do you leave room for God to act? And the answer, the Christian answer, we know we should not retaliate. Uh, if somebody drags your name through the mud, it doesn't mean you should drag their name through the mud. It doesn't mean that you should lower yourself to their level and play their games and make yourself just as guilty. At some point, it doesn't matter even who started it. But it's true, you and I should take the high road and we should leave room for God to retaliate and for God to bring justice. And that's the amazing thing about this passage is, um, I mean, at least most of us don't live in, uh, in a reality where people are physically trying to hurt us and take away our lives and we need these weapons of war to defend ourselves. But on whatever level it may be that our enemies are trying to harm us, it's amazing that in today's passage, God declares that he will bring justice and that even the people of God will have the freedom to burn their weapons of war, for there will be no need for them. And it talks about this blessing of how the people of God will take the plunder of their enemies. And it's amazing how when godless people come up with all kinds of schemes and um, plans to hurt others, so often it backfires and it comes back to get them. I hope that we can take passage in today's comfort and um, in answer to that question, leave room for God to act and bring justice. Uh, the reality is uh, most of us have probably been hurt many times by people uh, who were trying to hurt us for whatever reason. And we learn from today's passage that we really should back off, take a moment and pray, and we shouldn't retaliate in the way of the world. And I really believe that God is the one who will bring ultimate justice. Let's pray. Lord, forgive us for the times where we played by the, the standards of this world. Allow us to adopt the standards of God, which are so radical, which are so different, and allow us to love our enemies and turn the other cheek and allow you to be the one who brings justice and righteousness. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.